I've been reading that over the last few weeks, sales of Easter trees and Easter decorations have been going up. And I'm not surprised because there is this chiming uh, in our nation with this sense of wanting to celebrate life and hopefully restrictions easing and some sense of being able to see friends, family and meet up again. Especially Easter trees have been selling very well and I'm somebody who's always decorated an Easter tree ever since my children were quite small and made an Easter garden and even though my children are now grown up I still make an Easter garden and decorate that tree. We are here today in the churchyard of St Mary the Virgin in the village of Rue which is just north of Exeter and I'm standing in front of this very large cross, the cross being the original Easter tree, the tree of life as we sometimes call it. This cross is quite old and the base is at least 500 years old and there's that sense of Christians worshipping on this holy day of Good Friday for these many, many centuries. We think about the cross of Christ in many different ways. We talk about it as the place where Jesus took on himself all the violence and the very worst that the world could throw at him. We speak of it as the place of mercy and forgiveness, where the life and love of God is shown at its most extreme. We speak about it as the place where Jesus took our sin, where he died in my place. And we speak about it as the place where Jesus, fully God and fully human being, most entered into the suffering of this world. But I like to think of the shape of the cross. That vertical, that speaks to me about the connection between heaven and earth. A connection made on the cross that cannot be broken. It is there forevermore. This place where Jesus came to live among us and to die for us and to reconcile us to God. Which means that always God is closer than we think, that we are connected with our loving God and Heavenly Father. And then there is the horizontal beam. We have a wonderful line in Church of England liturgy that says of Jesus, he opened wide his arms for us on the cross. When Jesus opened wide his arms, he was embracing the whole world. Yes, he was reaching out to those on either side of him on the cross, but he was reaching out to all people. And it reminds us not just that we are close to God, that heaven and earth are connected, but also that we are brought close to one another through Christ. So the cross is the connecting point. It is where everything meets and everything makes sense. Jesus said these words in John chapter 12, when I am lifted up, and he was talking about the cross, when I am lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. So the cross is both personal. Jesus died for you and me. And I wear this to show that Jesus is my saviour. But the cross is also public. Jesus was lifted up so that all the world might see, that all people might know him. This cross here is in a churchyard, but just up the road there's a cross uh, that is a war memorial and it's there at the crossroads. And all over Devon we will find crosses in different places, market squares, city centres, some of those lovely ancient wayside crosses. The cross is for us and it is both personal and public. When I was a vicar in Derby, on Good Friday, we would gather in church for a service. It would be all the churches in the vicinity. We'd gather together, we'd worship together, we would sing together. And then there came a point in the service where the very large wooden cross, that tree of life, was brought down from uh, the altar area 
and it was carried. It took at least two people to carry it and it was quite heavy. They needed to take turns. And we would follow the cross out of the church and through the churchyard and up to the high street. We would be following in silence. It was such a holy day and we wanted to mark this both for ourselves but also in that public way that Christ died for the world. So we'd walk in silence right from the very youngest to the oldest and you might pass a neighbour and you just kind of wave um, but we would keep that quiet as we were going past people and shoppers, all the cars going past. We'd go down the high street, we'd cross at the traffic lights, which was always a bit tricky, and then we'd come back the other way to a patch of grass where there was a place for the cross and we would place it there. And then we would sing, when I survey the wondrous cross. Perhaps uh, like me on this Good Friday, you might find a place in your imagination to sit at the foot of the cross to receive again the mercy, the love, the forgiveness of God that flows through Jesus and through his death for us. And perhaps also you might stretch out your arms because Jesus died for this world. And it's a world that is in so much need of that love and that mercy and that new life that he gives. And you might pray for this world, for our neighbours, for our friends and our family. So today, this holy day, we remember that Jesus died for us, for you and me, and for this world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, for by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Amen.